Hi, everybody. Tim Hughes here. I'm the CEO and co-founder of DLA Ignite. With, to, with me today is Ethan Berg, and we're going to talk about the future of online social experiences. I'm really excited today, Ethan, because you, you've shown some stuff to me before, um, and it's really exciting. We're also going to talk a little bit about the metaverse as well, which is something we're going to sprinkle on the top. Before we get into that, where can people find you? Yeah, hi. Thanks again for having me today. Hello to everyone. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, my handle is Ethan C. Berg. Just search my name, Ethan Berg, too. Uh, I mean, Instagram, Twitter, all of that kind of stuff, too. If you just search our company for Agora World, A-G-O-R-A, -E World. So so you, you started what you've developed um, back in university, you came up with an idea, didn't you, that, 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 um, about how the world was kind of connected? Yeah, I started this company in my sophomore year at Temple University here in Philadelphia. And, and so, so you, you, you came up with this idea that, that at, what happened in university was that people moved away. Um, yep. and, and, and what you wanted to do was actually, um, there was two things with with people you have relationships and you have experiences so yeah. how can you do that how can you have a relationship and an experience in a, in when the people aren't present well you can ring them up or you can send them text messages and that but you've actually come up with something where you can actually be in effect in in the present with them haven't you yeah i mean i would say you can do things like this too i'm right like we're kind of in the same space right now tim uh just a slightly different right I, and i think that that's that's really the most important part is that we do have ways we can connect and, and they keep us together. Social media is a great use. Um, you know, there's a lot of benefits, but there's still a lot of downsides. Um, and as you said, the downside is that you can't really feel like you're there together. I think that that physical presence side of an experience of a interaction with other people is the most vital part to getting to know someone or, or understanding where you are and really bringing it and feeling it, you know, um, feeling like you're together in the same room at the same moment, rather than just kind of watching us on a screen right now. Like any viewers, they, they would literally be like in the audience, we'd be sitting on a stage, they would see us next to each other. They'd see the people next to them, be able to shake their hand. You know, it, it would feel like you're there, but you're thousands of miles away. <laughs> Because because I think we've all got used to over the pandemic having conversations like this. Um, and, um, you know, before we came on, you told me that you're in the, the basement of your parents uh, house. And this is um, this is Ethan's gaming room that you're actually um, in, which which is known by the family as Ethan's gaming room. But, um, you know, we so we get to know each other in a certain amount of way, but it's we, we haven't shaken hands or. Yep. Haven't looked at each other's eyes. We haven't made any memories, you know, and I think that the, those parts of the human experience, like that human element is really what's missing. Right. I mean, again, we have a ton of experiences we do online. I can go shopping on Amazon, but does it feel like you're shopping? Are you really browsing the shelves? Are you really picking up and holding the product in your hand? And I think that where we're really headed in the world today uh, with these immersive experiences, virtual reality, metaverse, what they're doing is creating meaning for the time that we spend online. Right. And that's the most important part. So, so you're, you're, you're a gamer, aren't you? From, from, from an early age in terms of, and we were saying earlier on, you didn't wake up with an iPad in your hand, but you've, you've had computers around since an early age. Yeah. I, I mean, I was born in the late nineties. Um, like I graduated from university last year. So uh, when it comes to my life, like my first 10 years, it, you know, my dad had a Blackberry uh, and I remember that like being revolutionary, but uh, you know, it absolutely was. I mean, it changed the game. It added things together. But then once the iPhone came out when I was, I think I was 10 when it came mm -hmm. out in 2007, you know, that was where the tipping point, I think of, of, a lot of these experiences coming to life in a much more real way. Um, I mean, iPads were soon after Xbox, PS3, like all of the, the gaming consoles were really bringing high fidelity experiences. So, I mean, I have friends that I met online from video games that I've never met in person, but I, you know, we know a lot about each other. We still talk on a somewhat regular basis, you know? So for me, it's, it's kind of a, a common thread in my life of meeting people in a different space. So, so what, what's changed because second life came out, was it, I can't remember when it came out. Um, yep. And, 
And, you know, that that was seen as something that was um, revolutionised. And there was all kinds of things, those sort of um, immersive games. Um, my niece was forever playing Farmville and I kept getting... <laughs> she was one of those people that kept sending me um, uh, invites on um, Facebook and stuff like that. So what what's changed since all those have come out? Because a lot of people go, Metaverse, yeah, it's Second Life. Yeah, well, Second Life and Sims were the first introduction into like more of a real world type experience. Everything else is still kind of games, right? I mean, you have shooting games, sports games, like there's a ton of different experiences. But when it comes to the real world, it never really caught traction. I think that's because the world wasn't really ready. Technology wasn't really ready. I mean, they're a heavy load to a computer. It's just starting to become web based. Um, so I think that that's one of the more important parts is they they paved the way for it to become possible. Second Life actually has 100,000 daily users right now. So, you know, it's not like they've disappeared. They've just transformed in a ton of different ways. Um, and I think a lot of people have followed suit by creating innovative solutions to things that they had they didn't think of when they were first created, um, including ourselves in some ways. Uh, I, I think it's funny you named Farmville, though. Uh, I was actually thinking about it yesterday where like, are you familiar with like NFTs and and that whole craze right now, right? The, the um, non fungible tokens. So you know you can buy this digital artwork. I have friends who own pictures of ducks. They own this rhinoceros. Somehow they're worth tens of thousands of dollars. I, I personally I don't quite understand, but I I do also understand the importance of social currency, and mm -hmm. I think that you know in the real world. People that buy a Rolex or a flashy car aren't really just buying it because they want it. it, it the social currency, the the aura that it gives you to other people is an important thing. There's a certain status that's associated with different brands, different types of items. And I think in the digital world, we've seen that transform to our digital lives and our digital identity being almost as, if not more important than the way we portray ourselves in the real world. I have more meetings online every day than I do in person. So okay. it's important what you showcase. And Farmville to me was really the first introduction to NFTs because you had people buying digital sheep. You had people buying ducks for tip jars, whatever it might be. And that was really like a digital item that in my opinion, paved the way towards you know social currency in an online sense is going to become, you know, how do I portray myself? So with all of these virtual worlds coming out, I think that the number one thing is going to be digital merchandise. I mean, you can customize what you look like, the way you portray yourself, what your world, your virtual house looks like when you bring people there. Um, and there's so many more eyes online than there are in person. Like you own a piece of cool art in your house. How many people are coming in your house? If you buy and own a digital piece of art, that you have endless people that could visit that on a regular basis, no matter where they're located. So why don't you, um, you've got a couple of videos, haven't you, that you can run. So I why do. don't you um, give us a demo of uh, and show those? Um, so I need to bring up, uh, add you to. Sweet. Then I think I can go. Okay, so I'm gonna share it now. Is this, can you see it? Oh, it's, sorry, there we go. Yeah? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's kind of just an example of what we're building. As you can see, the point is to transform your experience into a 3D world. So rather than a flat 2D screen that we typically interact with online, it ends up turning it into a three-dimensional world that you can truly explore with other people in real time. You can do art galleries, you can do showcases, you get to customize your avatar so you look what you wanna look like. As I said, that online digital identity is important and it's spatial audio. So the closer you get to someone, the louder, the further away you get in the virtual world, the quieter they'll be, same way it works in the world world. You can keep going too. And and how long is this sort of stuff taking for you to, to spin up? Our platform is fully no code. So my dad, for example, he built his own business world, I guess you could call it for his company. He took him, I think it was an hour and a half total. Right. 
in order to fully customize a world. And then just one more here. So this was like an actual career fair we ran okay. for a pretty cool organization in Philadelphia. Um, but we had 250 attendees, 25 companies, multiple people that found jobs at this career fair. So you got to walk up to a booth, interact with the, you know, the representative from the company right there while other people in the space are talking to other companies um, and learn more about them in real time. Submit your resume just like you would at an in-person career fair. I mean, even, you know, regardless of what, what you think about conferences and exhibitions, it gives you the opportunity that, to actually go up and, and, in effect, have conversations with people. Yep. I mean, I was always told, I went to my first conference two weeks ago, first in person I've ever gone to. And, you know, the one thing that I realized from that experience was the most important parts of it were in the hallway. Yes. You meet people, you learn a lot, you exchange ideas, for the connection, you know, and I think that that was, if not more important than the actual presentations, not that they weren't great. I really loved what I learned and heard. I just think that that element is necessary. And this is this is this is what what you talked about, about bringing in effect experiences and bringing people together. And creating yeah. memories, you know, of because I've seen you. you I, I remember you sending me a video of for that career fair, and you bet you you created Philadelphia with the. Uh, did because um, all around Philadelphia, you've got the um, where the bell I'll is. And they, I'm trying to. I'm sorry, my my history isn't very good, and my <laughs> geography of Philadelphia isn't very good. But you built, nah, nah, you know, where Rocky stands up on the. Um, and, and, and 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 all around that and it was just fascinating that you can walk straight out of the conference and walk into in effect a virtual philadelphia yeah i'm gonna pull that up right now just so people kind of have an idea of what you were talking about well i've, um, I've already uh, pitched it haven't i so uh let's add that i'm gonna have to show it is that is that the one that we add to the stream or was that another one? Oh, this is gonna be a different oh one. Well, i see yeah I'm oh gonna... wait can you see that yes awesome so as he said, we did rebuild the city of Philadelphia. So we took some 3D scans of City Hall, our baseball stadium, Citizens Bank Park. Uh, we added the Independence Hall too, as well as the Rocky Steps and the Art Gallery, uh, Art Museum, sorry, uh, and turned it into a little city of sorts that you could customize and interact with other people within. So we actually held a part of a conference here uh, some social events as well, so that people could interact in a much more real world situation. So for those that couldn't come in person, they had the opportunity to interact with other people as if they actually visited the city of Philadelphia that day. And yeah, just pausing it there. I mean, as I said, you got Rocky steps over there. We actually held a Rocky. We hid a Rocky statue within the space so that people could walk around and try to find it fantastic so where where do you see this going in the future i think that yeah. the hybrid experiences are going to become much more vital i think that you know in person is going to come back there's no doubt i'm, I'm a more in-person kind of guy than i am online um but I, I will say that ultimately i also question you know why can't we have similar experiences that we do in person i, I don't think there's a downside i mean i never would have met you if we weren't no. able to do things like this you know and i think that there's an opportunity for us to get to know each other even better by some experiences that we could share. I mean, instead of, you know, oh, let's hop on a Zoom call, let's, let's go to a, let's go to an aquarium. You know, we can walk around, we can see the fish, we can, you know, you can even swim with the fish and you won't have to shower afterwards for your next meeting. You just hop out and get ready for it, you know, uh, switch URLs. So I, I do think that we're going to see a lot more real world application applied to the virtual world. Um, and as technology continues to increase with augmented reality, I mean, we're seeing glasses start coming out. That, that's, yeah. that's huge. Um, soon, I think it'll be contact lenses 20 years from now. And I think that once that becomes a reality, I do think that we're going to see certain situations where the virtual and the real world will interact with one another. So mm -hmm. a conference is a great example where, say you're hosting it at 
the, the, uh, the convention center in any city, right? You could take a 3D scan of that environment. You could use the map that they build for where the booths are going to go, where is the stage going to go, how big are they, and put it in the digital world so that people that are showing up virtually, if you use cameras in the real world to kind of scan people in person in the conference, they would be able to see the people that are walking past them physically because it's the same geolocation as it would be in the real world. And then vice versa. So if you have augmented reality glasses on, you would see people walking past you virtually and you would be able to say, hey, how are you? It's great to meet you. Where are you located right now? I'm here. You are there. You know, and I think that that is where the future is headed. Um, reminds me a lot of Star Trek. Uh, I think of Star Wars <laughs> too, with, you know, yeah. when they're sitting in the, the Jedi Council chairs and you've got holograms sitting in the chairs around you. It, yeah. You know, people think it's far fetched, but we're starting to see it trickle in already. So. Because at the moment, you know, hybrid conferences are basically this, where we talk on video and um, I found them really dull and boring because it's just people presenting slides. Um, and at least if you're in sitting in a room with people, you've got, you can actually look around and say, oh, there's a bloke picking his nose over there and stuff like that. Whereas, um, uh, whereas you can't do that um, when you're sitting at home. Um, so, but I can see this really there being that merger. So what you're talking about really is putting a social layer on top of the, the, the metaverse. Yeah. That, and that, that's essentially what we, our team has done. You know, we, we've kind of taken all of the time that's needed to build all of these functionalities that are necessary for any of the metaverse platforms that exist. You need to be able to hear voice. You need text chat. You need to see someone's avatar. You need all of these different things, right? So we've built it and, and we're actually going to be opening it up and, and allowing other people to build on top of our platform. So, in, you know, if you have an idea, you have something you want to build, don't recreate the wheel and do what every other team's already doing. It's, it's so expensive. God, the amount of time and resources we poured into this is, uh, man, it, it's a lot, you know, and there's still a lot of work to go. It's just, we want to make it easier for other people who have ideas to go and actually execute and create those experiences that they're looking to share with their community, their friends, their family, whatever it might be. So, so what about data privacy? That is a huge area. I mean, we collect none. We don't collect personal data, only what you input. Um, so your name, if you put your email in, we get that, right? Your LinkedIn link. But once you delete it, it's gone. All aggregate. I think you're going to see a lot more of that moving forward as well. Um, or at least move into a situation where I think that Many companies are going to argue that the data is important. And, you know, running a company, I've definitely started to learn that we want to understand how our users use the experience. That, that's just to make it better, truly. Um, but I think once you get to the point where you're going to be monetizing the data, I think that that's kind of a hard barrier. And I think that we're going to start seeing companies say, hey, if you want to let us collect your individual data, we're going to give you a 50% cut of all of the money that comes in. So at least you are making money off of, I mean, data is oil. It is the most expensive thing right now. It's the most valuable product. Um, like you are the product, right? If it's free, you're the product. It's always what yeah. I've been told. So I think that we're going to start seeing that where it's more of a shared economy, that people get what they deserve. It's more democratized, more decentralized in that sense. And I also do believe that we're going to have the ability to not let people collect anything. And, and especially when you enter worlds like ours, it's very dangerous because it's already been proven through so many research studies that people act in a very similar fashion in a virtual world that they do in the real world. So if you go to a retail store, you're going to walk like a virtual one or in person, you're going to walk through it very similarly to the way that you would in person, same with the conference. And because of that, I think that collecting individual people's human behavior is a hard line where we cannot breach that because there, there's just, I think that's too much. Like that's just, I don't personally like the idea of someone knowing exactly where I'm going to look. You know, if I walk into a store and I look here, it's okay to know, Oh, people around this age typically look here that are male, right? That, that's fine. But once they say, oh, Ethan Berg, you should bring him back and put a product right there because he's going to look at that spot. I'm not okay with that. Like that's a little much in my opinion. And I think that a lot of people are starting to see the over collection becoming an encroachment 
on our personal rights. It's it's it always makes it always makes me laugh about retail stores because they always because because males males don't generally don't like shopping. They walk into a shop, they buy buy something, and and they'll, they'll grab the first thing and the meat. So what they do is they they have these man traps. At the, at the um, and super super dry here in the UK, are amazing at it. So the, 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 they'll, the, it'll be the most expensive thing in the shop, and they'll be place it right at the front at the front. So you know, man trap, man, man will just get it, and then you'll go and buy it. Whereas if you walk into the shop, you'll see there's this, and, and it will be there'll be sales and stuff on. It's it's true. I didn't know that actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, yeah. Have, to watch, I'll have to watch out for myself on that end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I always have to. I go. I always have to walk past it. Man trap, man trap, man trap. Man, man trap. <laughs> so, so, um, but, uh, so you see this? So you, I actually wrote something down in when we did the prep, which is just you said this is like humanity coming together. Yeah, I do believe that because it really drops barriers. You know, I mean, we currently live in a place where we have individual countries. Every country has their own states or counties. Every county has individual towns. Like there are, it, it, there's so many smaller sectors. And I think that what, what we're about to see is breaking down that geographical barrier. I mean, me and you, again, me and you are in the same place. It might not be immersive and engaging as it will be, but we are essentially in the same exact place, despite the fact that I'm in the United States, you're in UK. That has never before been possible. And I think that the only, the advancement, right, moving forward, it's only going to get increasingly better, feel more real than it does today. And, you know, there are upsides and downsides, but I think that dropping the barrier will allow us to see each other as humans, no matter where we are. You're not, you know, you're not from England, like you're from England, right? You're, you're in the UK, but it doesn't mean that we can't know each other on a personal level. And I yeah. think that that will break down cultural barriers. We'll get to better understand different cultures for who they are um, and understand each other more. And I think understanding is important for bringing us together. And the second part of that is translation. I mean, we're seeing some apps already tested with the um, automatic text coming out of translation. But soon, I think that it's going to be possible that we have it set for whatever language we speak and we want to hear. And I could talk to someone in Japanese and I'll hear it as English. He'll hear my English as Japanese. And I think that that is a very soon reality that will further break down the barriers and really bring us together as one world. We, we are one world, right? And that's that to me is the most important part. Like, like, I don't quite get the disagreements, I guess, on a regular basis between different areas of the world. I, like I do, I get it, but it's politics. The normal person... Or we're not involved. We're we're you know the the average Joe. Uh, you know they're they're not involved in that. They're they're the one that doesn't really care. They just want to know someone and hear more about it. And I think that that's a level of understanding we're going to start see transcend across the entire internet, which will lead to a much greater positive development for humanity. Fantastic, Ethan. It's been so fascinating. I've been looking forward to this discussion for for. Um, well, since September, so uh, I really appreciate you coming on and sharing with us. Yeah, thank um, you for thank having you so me. Um, can you remind people where they can find you? Yeah, on LinkedIn, I'm definitely the most uh, I, I'm most active on LinkedIn. You can find me and just search me Ethan Berg uh, from Agora World, and then again on Twitter, Instagram, um, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn. I believe it's if you look us up, Agora VR. Um, dot world so that is a-g-o-r-a-v-r dot world is our website that should also be our handles for a majority of the different social media so please reach out if you have any questions uh, about where we're headed or just you know how you can utilize it even in today's standard i'm happy to talk to anyone about any of this kind of stuff i love this so yeah. cool and i know you're really happy. passionate about it and you will do yet so yeah, but thank you again for having me and happy Thanksgiving to anyone that is in the United States. Absolutely. Happy Thanksgiving to you as well, Ethan. Thank you so much thank for you. coming on. Appreciate it. Yep. Thank you again. Have a thank good one. Thank you. Bye.